today we're taking a look at the Humphreys. This is my very first game on my main account with the new Super American Destroyer. This thing is pretty good actually. Even though the upgrades over the gearing seem pretty minor, the extra health combined with the much better shell velocity makes this ship a pretty good ship to play, mainly in the battle impact department. I find this ship I can rely on a lot. The torps are pretty solid, honestly. Really just gearing torps copied over, but gearing has some of the better torpedoes at tier 10 in my opinion, thanks to their really good range, decent detectability, and all right speed and damage. They're really, really useful. They allow you to torp from well outside radar range, which is really nice. Depending on what matchmaker you get, there are times you just can't get within 12 kilometers, let's say. Very common torpedo distance, right, for a Shimikaze, let's say. The Humphreys also, with its gun power, is able to take a lot of cap zones. With 5.9 kilometer concealment here, a lot of HP and decent DPM, I'm pretty confident here against all but the best of gunboats in the game. So here, in this case, we have another Humphreys to deal with. There's some of the Kenmings in the north, and those are the other Super DDs that released with this patch. And they're pretty strong in their own right, but I would not be that afraid of them in a Humphreys, at least in a gunfight. But another Humphreys, that's another story. So we're going to reverse in. This is something I really like doing as a destroyer. If I'm confident enough in my gun power, but not so much so that I'm just going to full YOLO in, this Kremlin here is probably ready to take a gunfight here, or at least help his destroyer. We know the torpedoes came from right in front of that island. There's no other possible way they could have come from. So we're just going to disengage at this point. I don't really want to take this fight quite yet. And besides, we could go after the Schlieffen or possibly take our attention towards the Sea Cap. Where, yes, they do have some DDs, but if we combine our forces with this Yu Yang, we can play up north as well. A pretty slow start for us, but we do manage to cap the B zone, and this really does allow us to control the game from here. Whether we go north or south, we at least have the B cap under our control, and we can lend our support where needed. The Humphreys has position north as well, so it's really nice timing that we're on our way up here as well. Notice the shell velocity much better than something like the gearing. Not quite the level of Sherman, unfortunately, even though the guns do look similar to what the uh, Shermans do, just with dual turrets rather than singles. They don't quite have the shell velocity of Sherman though, unfortunately, but it's more than enough to be comfortable at these longer ranges. Eight kilometers is a pretty long range for gearing guns. I'll say that. It's very difficult to hit shells at that range with the gearing, especially if the target's moving. Whereas the Humphreys, I feel reasonably comfortable in, which is great. I really, really like that upgrade over the gearing. The HP pool, too, allows us to be just that little bit more aggressive without actually losing so much HP. We're ineffective in the long run. We'll launch some torpedoes around where the DDs are, as well as the Borgone, those dual-purpose kind of torpedoes. Just throw the torps in pretty common lanes for ships to travel in, and you never know. You might get some random torpedoes. I didn't really feel like pushing the north too aggressively. Our Yu Yang has certainly lost some HP. Although now, with the uh, enemy DD dead, one of them uh, it could be a little bit better. But I really wanted to maybe focus on this Schlieffen down here, who is preventing our team from really doing much in the south, and might actually pose a threat to, say, our Vermont in the middle of the map. So we're just going to light him up and start farming. This ship is pretty decent in a smokescreen, giving us a lot of time to farm an enemy battleship, let's say. I apologize for the commander, maybe. Uh, I'm not really sure how to feel about this one sometimes. I think it's kind of cringe, and other times it's like, okay, this is kind of a funny uh, commander to have. Um, I've probably toned down the volume in the YouTube VOD, though, so we'll see if it actually shows up too aggressively. Uh, but she is very talkative, this commander. Very, very talkative. Getting us some nice fires here on the Schlieffen. One of those is permanent already. The Schlieffen has decided to charge us, though, so we have to be a little bit careful that we don't die to the secondaries once he gets in Hydro range. A second permafire will definitely be very useful, but uh, we gotta at least work on an escape plan here. I don't really want to uh, get secondary to death by a charging Schlieffen. So we've done some decent damage now, but you saw how 
slow that early game was. I cut out a lot of it, but based on the time, right, we're already eight minutes into this match. And we have started doing damage now, but I really like playing the early game slow as a DD. And you're going to see throughout this game that just maintaining a lot of HP into the mid and late game just allows you to control the end game so, so well. Obviously, with blowouts these days, that is a little bit more difficult. Um, but we do pick up our second kill there on the Schlieffen, our first kill, of course, for those <laughs> wonderful, wonderful random torpedoes, which we're going to throw out again. 16 kilometers of range is really, really handy to have. Um, but I really do enjoy playing my DDs. Honestly, I have been a little bit hard on battleships recently, uh, the Daisen especially this week. I mentioned the consistency of the guns, the reliability or unreliability of the guns, and... Oftentimes, I find myself enjoying playing destroyers just so much more because they have guns, torpedoes, positioning that I can rely on. And that allows me to make plays or at least know what the general outcome is if I push the northern side of the map into a half-health enemy destroyer. I'm probably going to take some damage, sure, but I am going to get the kill and that's going to open up the whole northern side of the map. Some of my frustration with battleships can come from situations like that where I push aggressively, make a play, and then I get that overpenning salvo at eight kilometers flat broadside on a cruiser. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, all that pre-planning and thinking about that play that I'm gonna make is just down the drain and there's nothing I can do because uh, random RNG uh, took it away from me. That can be a little frustrating for me. And if you're someone who feels like that as well at times, Definitely give DDs a go. The American line is pretty solid, obviously. Now with the Humphreys at the very end, it's pretty nice. But also the British line is awesome. If you're looking for this cap controller, gunboat, farming from smoke kind of playstyle as well, the daring is just really, really good at tier 10. Probably better than gearing even, I would say. Although I gotta say the torpedo range is a bit of a downside. I like the hybrid nature of the Humphreys and the gearing for that allowing me to send out a lot of torps. And even though we haven't hit too many this game, they are very useful in a lot of matches. Like here, again, hitting torpedoes in on that Kremlin as he's pushing in and getting another random DD kill from torpedoes. That's two this game. Those aren't always gonna happen, of course, but very, very handy to get those kills in that way. With the Kremlin here, I'm just waiting for his damage control to be off cooldown. You can see the flashing lights there for a second. That means he's immune to fires, so I don't really want to be shooting until I know I can get those permanent fires on him. The Minotaur does open up, and from some messages from our teammates earlier, we know he is a radar Minotaur, so we definitely want to be running away. Unfortunately, I do miss out on my uh, burst fire there a little bit because uh, he went by the island and went dark. Unfortunate, but we do manage to stick one permanent fire and hopefully that's gonna be enough to uh, take him out. But a very close game here at the end, and this is where I love being in a destroyer. Just having this ability to contest areas of the map, go gain map control for my team, go cap zones, send out torps for enemy teams that are forced to push in. We're ahead on caps, we're ahead on points. Now we get ourselves a Kraken, which feels pretty good, um, but it does allow us to play that more passive tactical role. And I just ran away from that point, honestly. The Minotaur is a little bit scary with its radar. It's a stealth radar, and by that I mean the Minotaur, as soon as he gets detected by me, can pop his radar, which is a 10 kilometer radar, and uh, instantly spot me back, which I think is a little bit cheesy and gimmicky. I'd love to see Wargaming just remove stealth radars entirely from the game, uh, but it's okay. We knew it was coming, and uh, we're gonna use the maneuverability here on the Humphreys to uh, dodge most of the incoming fire here. Uh, but I do like the game design around radars when you can spot them first, right? A Worcester, for example, having nine and a half kilometer detect, 10 kilometer detect, and a nine kilometer radar. Des Moines in that 11 kilometer detection with a 10 kilometer radar. Nevsky, 12.5, 12.6 kilometer detection, 12 kilometer radar. It gives you that heads up as a DD that allows you to play around it. We're fine here, and we do manage to get a win on a Kraken here in our very, the very first Humphreys game I played on this account. Uh, went very, very well. Uh, but those radars are a little bit funny sometimes. I do like radar overall, just not the stealth variety. 144k, five kills, two solo caps, very useful to the team. 
and uh, a very fun match. I like the certainty that comes with a lot of these DD matches. I feel like I'm very much in control of my destiny in a lot of these games, and I find that fun. As for the build here on the Humphreys, I'm definitely going more towards a gun build. That's really what the bigger strength of Humphreys is over the gearing. That's kind of our upgrade going to a super ship. I want to maximize that as much as I can. I also find the guns just that little bit more reliable. The torps are still good, even if you don't fully invest in them. We will do a little bit on the commander here, just getting fill the tubes here for a little bit better reload time. But other than that, we're taking the pretty standard 10 points down the right hand side of the tree here. And then we're going for Adrenaline Rush, getting ma more main gun reload here, and then even getting our Demolition Expert here, because they actually only have a 5% fire chance base, unlike things like the Daring, I think, has around 9 or 10% on the Daring. Let me just uh, check really quick. This is one of the weird differences that the American line has had. Yeah, 9% on the Daring instead of 5% on a Gearing and a Humphreys. It's a little bit odd having... Uh, <laughs> actually better dpm more shell hits and better fire chance on the daring it's pretty pretty extreme um, but that is one of the reasons i like that line as well but here we do get the better torpedoes to use those 16 kilometer torps are just awesome to have they're very nice to just throw it randomly into choke points and very easy to hit a lot of battleships with them at longer ranges we're definitely going with speed boost here over defensive fire not particularly useful defensive fire in aa these days and the speed boost allows us to get around the map a little quicker and allows us to dodge a few more torpedoes. With the Humphreys as well, just to quickly mention, like the gearing, it actually has a little bit better armor than some of the other destroyers do. A lot of them have just 19 millimeters of plating, but it has this weird 21 millimeter area in the middle, which does let you shatter some destroyer shells. Not all of them. Of course, the Humphreys has enough pen to actually get through that 21 millimeters of pen there on the he but if we go over to something like the dalarna for example doesn't have that extra plating and the guns are only capable of penning 20 millimeters so the dalarna would actually shatter on some of your armor as a dd which is pretty cool although a little bit niche and uh, not all that useful most of the time usually you want to be trying to dodge as many shells as you can uh, but I like this ship, honestly, and I had a lot of fun playing it, and I really do enjoy DDs for that extra bit of control that I feel over what the ship is going to perform like, and what positions I can take, how I, myself, am able to control and impact the battle. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.